Welcome to today's YouTube tutorial on nodal analysis. In this tutorial, we will deep dive into nodal analysis, which is a powerful technique that is used to solve circuits with multiple nodes and various voltage sources. Whether you are a beginner looking to grab the basics or someone seeking to refine your understanding, this tutorial will break down the concepts, the step by step, making nodal analysis easier to comprehend. So grab a pen, some paper, and let's unravel the mysteries of nodal analysis together. From my last YouTube tutorial, we talked about some laws that are needed to solve some circuits. We have talked about the Kirchhoff's law, the current law, and the voltage law. And before I go fully into node analysis, and eventually we will talk about mesh analysis. I want to talk about voltage and current division. This is a powerful technique that is can be that can be used to solve some circuits. That can be used to simplify circuits before you apply any law or any analysis. Do you understand? So, voltage and current division. So, what does this mean? Remember that when two resistors or when two components are in series, right? In this case, let me use a resistor. We will remember that same current goes through them, right? Same current goes through them, but different voltages are dropped in the two components. In this case, like I said, let's use resistors. So, which means that if there is a voltage source, supply the system right plus minus v which means that this voltage will be divided into d it will be this voltage will be divided into voltages that will be dropped into this first resistor and the voltage that will be dropped in this second resistor that's where we come about voltage division right so we usually apply it to components in series components in series resistors in series voltage are divided they don't have the same current right so the voltage division rule now states that v1 right so let me call this r1 and this r2 right so voltage division rule states that which v1 equals to r1 over r1 plus r2 multiplied by the total voltage right so we have R1 R over R1 plus R2 multiplied by the total voltage. So you've divided it. And of course, V2 will be equal to R2 over R1 plus R2 multiplied by the total source of voltage. That is the source of voltage. So the voltage in resistor 1 will be, it's just like they are in a ratio of R1 ratio R2, right? So the voltages are divided in the ratio R1 ratio r2 so this is how the voltages are divided so which means i want to get the voltage on r1 it will be what r1 over r1 plus r2 multiplied by v and you want to get the voltage on resistor 2 it will be r2 over r1 plus r2 multiplied by v that is very very simple right so we'll do an example on that and uh, let me talk about the current division and of course you should be you should already be thinking of what that will be of course so if resistors are connected in parallel they have the same voltage right so we are not dividing voltage but they don't have the same current so which means that currents are different in them and if we have a current source that is connected in parallel with them we can divide the current right so this is a current source i and let me call this r1 and of course the currents flowing here let me call it i1 and this is a uh, r2 and let me call the current flow in the second resistor i2 right so they are in parallel and of course same voltage are dropped in the two resistor resistors but different current passes through them that is at this top node there is kcl kcl is applied that is the current that is entering from this source is divided into two right so the sum of current here i because towards i1 plus i2 by using kcl i'm very sure you all remember what this means from if you don't understand what kcl means i will encourage you to go to our previous tutorial on ketchup's law and you will understand what you mean by kcl so current division so current division states that the current on resistor one will be r2 over r1 plus r2 multiplied by the total current and the current on resistor 2 
will be what r1 over r1 plus r2 multiplied by the total current source right so you can see that this one is in the ratio r2 to r1 it is is in the, is in the opposite sense to voltage cor voltage division right so if you, are, you want to get the current flowing to the first resistor it will be r2 that is the resistor 2 resistance 2 divided by the sum of the resistance multiplied by the total current and if you want to get the current going to the second resistor it will be r1 that is resistance 1 over the sum of resistances multiplied by i that is very very simple right they are in parallel different currents flows through them we have a current that is flowing in through the node that is connecting the two resistors and of course it will be divided so at the how is it divided it is divided using this rule current division rule that is very very simple so let's take an example this is an example to illustrate the voltage division right this is a voltage source 12 sign v it's a sinusoidal voltage source and this is usually the sign that's used to show that it's a sinusoidal voltage source it's usually a sign uh a sine waveform right so we have four ohm resistor we have six ohm and three ohm in parallel and right? first thing you know that these two six ohm and three ohm they are in parallel right and they will have the same voltage and the voltage on three ohm is designated as vx so which means that even if i when i combine six and three ohm the voltage on the two of them will still be vx why because they are in parallel that is straightforward to understand so let's for us to get vx we need to combine this right six ohm and three ohm, so that they will be the same and therefore we can consider four ohm will be in parallel with this equivalent resistance and therefore you can apply voltage division rule so when we uh combine six ohm and three ohms the equivalence resistors equivalence resistance will be six times three over six plus three which is 18 divided by nine which is two ohms how do i get that one over rt is equals to one over r1 plus one over r2 right so if i take the lcm i will have r1 multiplied by r2 then this should be r2 plus r1 but remember that this is reciprocal so if i take the reciprocal of both sides reciprocal of both sides i will have rt is equals to r1 multiplied by r2 over r1 plus r2 so that's how i got this so that's two ohms so if you draw the circuit again we we'll have what we we'll have a sinusoidal source then we have four ohms in series with that then we have two ohms right so we have two ohms and of course the voltage here is vx and of course we have four ohms here and we have 12 sine t volts plus minus right so right now we can apply the voltage division rule the four ohm and two ohms are in series and different voltages will be dropped on them and therefore the voltage division rule states that the to be divided in the ratio of their resistance right so which means that i'll be having the voltage vx to be equals to two over two plus four multiplied by 12 sine t so what does that give me that's 2 over 6 multiplied by 12 sine t right and this will give me what that's 4 sine t volts so therefore vx is equals to 4 sine t volts that is very very straightforward to get am i right that is very very straightforward to understand so using this same circuit let's get what i3 will be i uh, should find the current we find the expression for the current through the 3 ohm resistor so this is the same circuit that will draw you in the last board 
right so i want to use current division to get the current i3 i want to get current i3 so which is the current flowing through the 3 ohm resistor right so first thing we need to know the current entering the parallel combination right we need to know the current entering the parallel combination that's when we can now use current division to divide between six and three to divide between six and three. so how do we get that we need to get the equivalent resistance we have total voltage right which is 12 sine t so let's get the equivalent resistance so the equivalent resistance is what four is in series with six and three six and three are in parallel and the combination is in series with four am i right so what would this give us this four plus six times three over six plus three which is equals to four plus two which is six ohms right so which means that the total current is what 12 sine t over six which is two sine t amperes right so therefore we cannot divide between six and three remember what current division is i3 right will be equal to what um the resistance the six ohm resistor divided by the sum of the resistance right multiplied by the total current so i3 will be what six over six plus three multiplied by two sine t so which is six over nine multiplied by two sine t and therefore i3 will equal to four over three sine t amperes so that is very 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 simple look at it very well they must be in parallel before you can do before you can apply current division and when you apply current division it should be the reciprocal of voltage division voltage division and voltages are divided with respect to their res resistances but in current division it is the other way around that is um they are divided in in the order of their reverse resistances that is we have two resistors right uh, the current going through r1 will be r2 over the sum of resistances while the current going through r2 will be r1 over the sum of resistances then multiply by the total current that is very very easy to get so after like, after understanding this then we can now move into nodal analysis basic nodal analysis if you have any question on what I've thought so far, you can drop a comment and I will give you an answer. Thank you. We we'll begin our study of general methods for methodical circuit analysis by considering a powerful method based on Kirchhoff's current law, which is Noda analysis. So, in the previous YouTube tutorial, we talked about circuits containing only two nodes or containing uh a single peer node right so we found that major step of analyzing this was to obtain a single equation in terms of a single unknown quantity which is the voltages between the pair of nodes right but in this case we will be experimenting more than one node and we'll be getting more equations with respect to the number of nodes that we have in the circuit if you have four nodes right we'll be expecting uh, an equation in three ways that is we'll be expecting three equations why i said we'll be expecting three equations is because there's something called reference node we usually ignore the reference node. the reference node is a node that uh, we believe to have zero voltage all nodes have a voltage in the past in the previous youtube tutorial we only used one node right which and which is the which we got an equation in terms of a single unknown quantity which is the voltage between the pair of nodes but here now we'll be experimenting so much nodes in which, and we will be assigning voltages to each node but we will have to pick one node that will be acting as a reference node and that reference node will be having a zero voltage it is a known node of zero voltage so our goal will be to determine the voltage across each element and the next step in the analysis is critical 
we'll designate one node as a reference node and it will be a negative terminal of our voltage the nodal voltages so what does that mean it means that if you have six nodes we will have what five nodal voltages the last one is our reference node so this is an example of a circuit that we are going to apply node analysis to for example for for for, for context you can see that this circuit contains more than two nodes right so there's a node here in which i will designate v1 2. there's another node here which i will designate v2 and there's another node here i remember what i told you in the past uh, in the past youtube tutorial that these two nodes are known as just one they are known as just one right they are called single node pair circuit right single node pair there is just one node why because i told you that a node is a point between two circuit elements it's a point between two parts right you can see that there's no circuit element here and therefore it cannot be a uh, both of them cannot be a distinct node they cannot be a different they cannot be different nodes so a node must be in between two circuit elements so these two nodes they are just one node and there is a node between this circuit element this circuit element this circuit element and this circuit element so a node is a point that joins two or more circuit elements so and this will be representing as our what as our reference node so let me call it e so it's our reference node so in this case we are we want to get the voltages the node voltages so getting the node voltages can help us get many things can help us get the voltage on two ohms it can help us get the voltage on one ohm it can also get the voltage on uh, five ohms right i can get the current flowing through two ohms i can get the current flowing through one ohm i can get the voltage on this minus 1.4 ampere current source i can get the voltage on this 3.1 so it can help me node analysis will help me get a number of circuits parameters so how do we go about it we pick each non-reference node remember non-reference node are nodes that are not reference nodes e these two nodes this is which i said they are just one node this is the reference node there and so all other nodes are non-reference nodes and like i said the number of equations that we will get from node analysis correspond to the number of non-reference nodes we have so we have two non-reference nodes which means that we are looking for two equations so apply kcl at v1 so if you apply kcl at v1 current going in is equal to current going out so we always assume that current are going out right except it is otherwise stated for example this 3.1 it, it is stated that it is going inside the node v1 but others that are not stated we assume that they are going out so what do we have we have 3.1 is equals to what's the current in two ohms the current in two ohms using ohm's law ohm's law state that v is equals to i r so therefore i will be equals to v over r so the voltage is what v1 over 2 v1 minus 0 over 2 potential difference potential voltage on the particular element is the potential difference between its two terminals right you have a wire a live wire with you a, not a live wire but a, you have a wire a physical wire with you right uh so if you want to get the potential difference right maybe you connect the uh the wire to a particular appliance or a particular uh, uh a particular device so you want to get the you want to get the voltage at a particular point. So you have to connect it to the terminals to get the potential difference. The potential difference that will be calculated as voltage. So the potential at each of the terminals that will, that will be calculated as voltage. So the difference between the potential, the potential at this terminal V1 is V1, and the potential at the terminal E at the node E is what zero. So V1 minus zero is V1 then the current this is the current going down then the current on 5 ohms that is going out plus so what's the potential difference there v1 minus v2 
over 5. Remember that we are dealing with current. Right? So this is equation 1. The second equation is applying KCL to V2. So you can see that the current here is going down, that is going out. Because it is going out, we have, we have what? Minus 1.4 amperes. And like I said, we assume this one is going out. And we also assume the current at V2 here is going out. Remember, I don't con you should not confuse these two arrows. This arrow here is for node V1. The arrow here is for node V2. The arrow here is for node V2. So we assume the current is also going out of node V2. So because all the three are going out, they will be on the same side. Right? Plus V2 over 1 ohms plus V2 minus V1 over 5 equals to zero nothing is going inside the node so this is equation two so these are the two equations so you can see but from the rule of simultaneous equation for you to solve a simultaneous equation and it will give you unique solutions right you must have it i must the number of unknowns you have must be equal to the number of equations you have right so we have two equations and we also have two unknowns v1 and v2 and that is very very straightforward too to get am i right that is very very straight forward to get so if you simplify each equations you have what you have 0 0.7 v1 minus 0 0.2 v2 is equals to 3.1 that's the first equation and the second equation will give you minus 0 0.2 v1 plus 1.2 v2 equals 1.4 so these two equations are the simplification of one and two just find the SEM and combine the like terms you get the result here and of course when you solve the two you get answers to v1 and v2 so if you solve the two simultaneously using elimination method or substitution method or basically you can just use your calculator to do this you don't need to stress yourself on your calculator especially if you are using a scientific calculator so there's uh, you go to mode equations you and uh, you solve these two equations simultaneously so you should get v1 is equals to 5 volts and v2 is equals to 2 volts so you can see that it is very very easy to get the voltages at the nodes so for example now to get the voltage on two ohms right the voltage drop on two will be what the potential difference at the two terminals v1 minus e so the voltage on two ohm is what v1 minus e so i know v1 to be what five volts and the reference node is what zero so the voltage on two ohms is what 5 volts the voltage on 1 ohm is what v2 minus e which is what 2 volts the voltage on 5 ohms will be what v1 minus v2 which will be what 5 minus 2 which will be 3 volts and of course you can get the current in them and uh, uh, the current in 2 ohms the current in 1 ohm the current in 5 ohms that's very very simple I hope you understand what I just explained. So that's how to solve equations. That's how to solve circuits using nodal analysis. So the, um, the process is you identify the goal of your problem, count the number of nodes, designate one as a reference node, and of course, uh, redraw your circuits. If, if the circuit is too big for you, you can redraw your circuits. Redraw your circuit so that it can become very very clear for you to solve then after that you collect the known information so you have how many number of unknown voltages in this example here you have two unknown voltages right all current sources and resistors they have designated values right the current sources here they have designated values the resistors they have values right and therefore you devise a plan of course 
you know that you are applying node analysis right you, therefore you apply kcl to each node right so two independent kcl equations are gotten from this circuit and of course they are solved by simultaneous equation methods do you understand so after that you can determine if additional information is required from your question from the question anyone sets for you or any question you want to answer you know whether if any additional information is in there imagine they can ask you to get the voltage on 5 ohms and therefore what do you do you do v1 minus v2 and which is what 5 minus 2 which is 3 volts and that's how you solve it i hope that is very 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 clear so the last part i'll be explaining here is the supernode analysis so supernode is a special case of nodal analysis and this usually occurs when we have a voltage source in between two nodes supernode occurs when we have when we have a voltage source in between two non-reference nodes when we have a voltage source in between two non-reference nodes that's when we have a supernode and that is not that is not very easy to get right it is not very easy to get as we cannot we cannot get the current going through the voltage source because we are applying kcl to each node so how do i get the current going through the voltage source right it is not easy to get so that's where the super node analysis comes into play this is an example to showcase this super node analysis so you can see that we have a lot of nodes here and uh, if you count the number of nodes here we have what we have one we have two we have three we have four basically we have four nodes here and of course you have to designate one we have to designate one as a reference node and it is easier for me to designate this as my reference node right so and therefore i will be assigning other nodes i'll be assigning voltages to other nodes so let me name this v1 let me name this v2 and let me name this v3 right and you can see that in between two non-reference nodes v2 and v3 there is a voltage source so if i want to get kcl at v2 it's very difficult for me to get that because outline uh, there's no way i would know the current going through the voltage source at least at that moment so that's where the super node analysis comes into play so how do you now attack circuits like this super node analysis so this v1 we apply case here to this v1 as usual in the normal way so when we do that what do what do we have we have four parts we have four branches connected to v1 so the first one going inside which is minus eight amperes we have minus eight amperes this current source is also going inside which is minus three okay let me write it minus eight minus eight minus three amperes right so like i said for resistors we assume that the current is going out right so this one means that to be equal to the potential difference for four ohms v1 minus v3 v1 minus v3 remember we are dealing with current divided by four right then plus for the three ohms it will be v1 minus v2 v1 minus v2 over three so that's equation one so v2 and v3 we cannot just apply kcl to it because of the voltage source in between them so what we do is what we shall we take the two nodes as one and they are the two node is called a super node so that's that's why it is called a super node two non-reference node being combined as one and this is what i dotted so that two node will call we will take it as one right the value of the voltage sources is 20 years ago. so we usually have a constraint equation the constraint equation is the 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 equation of this super node so we call it the super node equation
for the supernode equation right it will be the potential so this 22 volts here is the potential difference at the, at the two terminals of the voltage source right and the terminals of the voltage source are v2 and v3 so what does that mean plus is here minus is here which means that i will have v3 minus v2 equals 22 volts so that's equation two so the third equation is i'll now consider these two nodes as just one node right i'll now apply kcl to the super node right apply kcl to the super node so apply kcl to the super node these two nodes has been combined as one so all branches connected to the super node are what one minus three amperes the four ohms two the three ohms three the one ohm four the five ohms five the minus 25 ampere current so six so six branches are connected to the super node so and that's what will form our equation so from minus three ampere it is going out right so minus three amperes right remember for resistors we assume the current is going out current is going out so this minus 25 ampere is also going out minus 25 then this two we assume is going out so for one ohm what will it be these two we assume it is going out so for one ohm it will be what plus v2 over one ohms law plus these five ohms it will be what v3 the reference node is zero so v3 minus zero over five so which is v3 over five right for this three ohms here yeah, what will it be it will be v2 plus plus v2 minus v1 over three then for the four ohms here yeah, it will be what plus v3 minus v1 over four is that all yes one two three four five six six one two three four five six equals to zero nothing is entering the super node so this is the third equation so did we achieve our goal yes we did how do i know that we did we have three unknowns v1 v2 v3 and how many equations do we have we have three equations one two three and that's it so from here, you simplify the equations and solve the simultaneous equation. That is very, very simple. Going over it again, we have to check the circuit, whether there is a voltage source in between two non-reference nodes. I believe you know how to identify reference nodes and non-reference nodes now. So you designate one as reference node. All other nodes are non-reference nodes. After that, you check if there is a voltage source in between two nodes. If you find the voltage source between two nodes, it means that you are going to apply super node analysis. And uh, after that, after noticing that, you look at the other non-reference node, take your normal KCL equation at that node, right? And make sure you assume that your current is going out on all resistors. The current is going out of the node. Then when you get to your super node equation, right you write for you write for the super node equation which is the potential difference at the two terminals of the voltage source so plus is at, at the v3 terminal so that's why it's carrying the positive sign and the v2 is carrying the negative sign it's cost to 22. then the third one is you the two nodes that are accompanying the voltage source will be counted as just one node so all every branch that is connected to the two nodes is will be like they are connected to just one node then you apply kcl to that super node so that will give you the third equation and then you solve the three equations simultaneously like i said you can apply calculator to solve the three equations so the first equation will be having uh, of course my minus is minus three so we have for minus 11 but we have minus 0 0.5833 v1 minus 0.333 v2 minus 
25 v3 is equals to minus 11 so the second equation is v3 minus v2 is equals to 22 and the third equation is minus 0 0.5833 plus 1.3333 v2 plus 0 0.45 v3 equals to 28 so the question asks us to get what v1 will be so if you solve these three equations simultaneously like I said, you can use your calculator to do that. You get V1 to be 1.071 volts. That is the answer. I hope you understand what we did here. So if you have any question on what I just explained, drop it in the comments and I will give you an explanation. So, summary of what I just did. Count your number of nodes. That's step one. Step 2 is designate a reference node. The number of terms in your nodal equations can be minimized by selecting the node with the greatest number of branches connected to it. That is the best way to choose your reference node. The node with the number with the greatest number of branches connected to it should always be your reference node. Then of course, step 3 is label your nodal voltages. That is the nodes that are non-reference, the nodes that you didn't designate as reference to, label them, label them with no down voltages. Then, if the circuit contains voltage sources, form a super node around each one. That is, if there is a voltage source in between two non-reference nodes, form a super node about them. So this is done by enclosing the source with two terminals and any other elements connected between the two terminals within a broken line exclusion enclosure then the step 5 is write a KCL equation for each non-reference node and for each super node that does not contain the reference node for example like I told you super node is usually formed by two nodes but you usually use non reference node two non reference nodes so that's how you get your super node equations and of course the sixth step is relate the voltage across each voltage source to nodal voltages so this is usually accomplished by simple application of kvl one such equation is needed for each super node defined so what we did here to get v3 minus v2 is equal to 22 volts is kvl i created kvl around that branch that is we are coming from this node to this node right so what would that be that would be v2 my uh, v2 minus 22 volts right minus v3 is equals to zero so what does that give me that's v2 minus v3 equals 22 volts Right, and if I multiply by minus, I'll be having V3 minus V2 equals 22. That's best. Then you solve the system of equations for nodal voltages, and you get your nodal voltage. That's very, very simple. And if you have any question on node analysis or super node analysis or voltage and current division, please drop a comment in this YouTube link, and I will make sure I answer you to the best of your taste. Thank you very much for watching this youtube tutorial and in our next tutorial we'll be talking about mesh analysis and super mesh analysis see you then